Watch this before you buy a Can-Am Maverick R Max. Can-Am has finally unveiled a four seat version of the mighty Maverick R, and that means that the Polaris Razor Pro R is no longer the king of the unlimited four seat class. But there are a few things you need to know before signing on the dotted line and bringing home a Maverick R Max of your own. This is everything you need to know about the 2025 Can-Am Maverick R Max. Let's start with the basics. The engine and transmission are carryovers from the two seat Mavr. You get the the same rowdy 999cc turbocharged triple with 240 horsepower and an excellent 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. That makes it the most powerful mainstream 4-seat side-by-side on sale today. And that combination comes with the same drive modes as the standard Maverick R, and that includes Sport Plus with its anti-lag system. If you want all 240 horsepower at your beck and call immediately, you mash that little Sport Plus button and hold on tight. And just like its short wheelbase sibling, the Maverick R Max also gets the wild, tall knuckle suspension. As goofy as it looks, the tall knuckle suspension actually offers pretty incredible performance. For one thing, there's a lot of articulation, but what's even more impressive is just how much more stable this rig feels than the competition. That should be doubly true when it comes to the Maverick R Max, because it is much, much much longer. This thing is a 142.5 inch wheelbase. Say that one more time. 142.5. What, uh, what is that in feet? That's like just shy of 12 feet. <sighs> okay. <laughs> By comparison, the two seat rig sits on a 108 inch wheelbase. <laughs> Even the massive Razor Pro R4 comes up just short of the Maverick R. It's just 133 and a half inches between the wheels. How else can I put this? Uh, a Chevy Suburban? Yeah? Yeah. 134.1 inches. It's 8.1 inches shorter when it comes to wheelbase. She a big girl. She a big girl. And all told, the new Can-Am is 175 inches long. That's over 14 feet. That is bananas. Bananas. How wide is it? 78.1 inches wide. Okay, so the same as the... Yeah, same as the two-seat, but that means it is the largest side-by-side -side currently made. Yeah, it's one of the bigger vehicles currently made, <laughs> I would say. And how does that compare to the Pro R? Pro R4? That's 170 pounds lighter. Than the Maverick R? Correct. Wow, okay, yeah. all yeah. right. So those dimensions tell me that the Can-Am Maverick R Max is probably heavier than his two-seat Ken? Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, we're talking 2,650 pounds dry. That's 410 pounds heavier than the two-seat rigs, oh and goodness. 170 pounds heavier than the Pro R4. God. So how does that affect performance? Well, we all know that lighter equals faster, and the Pro R is no slouch when it comes to power. We're talking 225 horsepower from a naturally aspirated four cylinder. So I'd wager with the extra weight, these two things are gonna be neck and neck in a drag race. Yeah, I'd take that action. All right, so what are we talking about when it comes to wheels and tires? There are a lot of 32 inch tires that run a 16 inch wheel available mm -hmm. for side-by-sides right now. The Pro R, meanwhile, runs 15s and for the first time gets bead locks on the four seat. We have been clamoring for that for years. Yeah, about time. So what you're saying is they're so close they might as well be the same. If you can get 32s in 16 inch where you are, rock and roll, grab the Mav R. If you're worried about it, maybe the Pro R is the thing for you. Moving inside, the Pro R4 has a really cool set of rear seats. They've got removable seat backs and folding bottoms and you don't need any tools to get them out. Yeah, it's kind of a stow and go situation. Right. So if you want to throw a cooler or anything back there, there's got a lot of room in the yep. Polaris. Can-Am hasn't said anything about something similar in the Mav R, so we're betting what you see is what you get in terms of rear seats. Yeah, and you can probably still unbolt them, but boy, that tool-free thing is really handy. That extra practicality is a huge win for the Polaris, especially since these rigs are really too big to skimp on storage. Hmm, that's fair. All right, so while we're inside, we've seen photos of the four-seat Mav R, and it looks just as good as the two-seat. Mm -hmm. Big 10-inch LCD screen, soft-touch materials everywhere inside and out. Uh, how does the Pro R stack up? You just spent a lot of time in the new Pro R4. Yeah, I just spent a few hours in one, and I gotta say, it's still not quite up to the Maverick standards, mm. but there is a lot of storage and they've done a couple of key things. One, they have put new seats in the Pro R. Uh, it's the same seat foam as comes in the Expedition. Uh, the backs are fixed, which is old Pro R stuff, uh, but they are incredibly comfortable. Uh, you also get a heated seat bottom and a ventilated seat back in the Ultimate trim in the front, which is sweet. 
And something else we clamored for on the old one, they've got full doors that go all the way down. They've got a nice molded door panel. There's like a place to put your arm. It's pretty good. It's pretty Gucci in there. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out that the Pro R still comes with an excellent stereo, mm -hmm. excellent navigation, neither of which seem to be available on this Mav R Max. No, uh, visually the Maverick R has a lot more pop, but when you actually start using it, the Pro R Outshine just kind of edges it out. And I got to say, there is so much storage in the dashboard and in the doors and the console in the Pro R. Uh, if you need a place to stash anything, you've got it. All of that is a big deal. Okay, speaking of big, uh, doll hairs, price, what are we talking? Uh, yeah, that's also big. Uh, <laughs> the 2025 Can-Am Maverick R Max, the base, comes in at $39,199 before destination charges or before you touch the accessories catalog. So that's not bad though. I mean, for what you're getting, 240 horsepower, four seats, DCT transmission. Okay, okay, but if you want the nicest model, the one with the smart shocks, the really cool electronic suspension, you are looking at $47,799 before you put any accessories on it and before you get it to the dealer. That is without destination, without tax. Almost 48 grand. So if you look at the option catalog, you're over 50 grand. Oh yeah, easy. <laughs> the Razer Pro R4 Sport starts at 38,999 and the top tier ultimate trim is 46,999. Again, those prices are before destination, taxes, or accessories. Or incentives, right? Both of these are within a thousand dollars of each other. And I bet you, if you find a dealer that's willing to work with you or a deal that either manufacturer is running, you'll be right on top of each other. Right. It's worth noting that the Razer Pro R4 only comes in two trims, the most basic sport model and the fully loaded Ultimate. The Maverick R, by contrast, has four trims available. There are two steps in between the most basic and the most expensive. All right, so it's a little bit of a choose-your-own-adventure on right. the Can-Am side. You get a little bit more customization. All right, so uh, when uh, when can I get my hands on these things? Well, the Pro R is available now, and the Maverick R should be hitting dealers in the next couple of weeks. Can-Am said during the launch of the Maverick R Max that they wanted it to be ready in time for Dune season, and that is nigh now. upon us. It's so, now. Yeah. So if you want either of these things, you should probably get on down to your dealer and get a deposit in. All right. That is everything you need to know about the new Can-Am Maverick R Max. That leaves only one question. Which one would you take home? Well, my knee jerk is the Maverick R Max because I've loved the Can-Am Maverick R every time I've driven it. That thing is humongous and that actually gives me pause. It's hard to mask that kind of size and weight no matter how good the drivetrain is. Right, and I think that leaves us at a place where this one's a little too hard to call. So why don't you let us know in the comments which one you'd take home. After you hit the comments, head over to utvdriver.com over there five days a week with news, reviews, buyer's guides, and more. Everything you need to know about one of these rigs. You can also check us out on social media. We want to see you there.